Hi, Emma. Could you explain the basic structure of the pelvis and how it relates to the lower limbs? Of course. The pelvis, or OS coxae, is formed by the fusion of three bones, the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Together, these form a single pelvic bone on each side. These bones meet at the acetabulum, the socket that forms the hip joint with the femur. The ilium is the largest part of the pelvic bone and consists of two main parts, the body, corpus osseus ilii, and the wing, ala osseus ilii, which you might know as the hip bone. One important line on the ilium is the linea arquata, which separates the upper, larger part of the pelvis from the lower, smaller pelvis. The pelvis is crucial because it forms the foundation for the rest of the body and supports the weight of the upper body when sitting or standing. That makes sense. How does the femur fit into all of this? The femur, or thigh bone, is the longest and strongest bone in the body. Its head, caput femoris, articulates with the acetabulum of the pelvis, forming the hip joint. It has a neck, column femoris, and two major projections, the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, which are sites for muscle attachment. Moving downward, the femur has a shaft, corpus femoris, with distinct surfaces and ridges like the linea aspira, which serves as a site for muscle attachment. At its distal end, the femur has two large condyles, the medial and lateral condyles, which articulate with the tibia and patella to form the knee joint. What about the knee joint? How does it function? The knee joint is a complex structure formed by the femur, tibia, and patella. It's primarily a hinged joint, allowing for flexion and extension of the leg. The knee also allows some rotation when it's flexed. The menisci, which are C-shaped pieces of cartilage, act as shock absorbers between the femur and tibia, and they also help with stability. The lateral meniscus is more circular and mobile, while the medial meniscus is more fixed. Several important ligaments stabilize the knee. The most notable are the cruciate ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament, ACL, and the posterior cruciate ligament, PCL, which prevent excessive forward and backward movement of the femur on the tibia. There are also collateral ligaments on the sides of the knee, which help prevent excessive side-to-side -side motion. Got it. And the tibia and fibula, how do they contribute to the lower limb structure? The tibia, or shin bone, is the larger of the two bones in the lower leg. It supports most of the body's weight and is located medially. Its upper end has two condyles, medial and lateral, that articulate with the femur to form the knee joint. The tibia's shaft has a sharp anterior edge, which you can feel as the front of your shin, and a distal end that forms the medial malleolus, which is the inner ankle bone. The fibula, on the other hand, is a smaller bone located laterally. It doesn't bear much weight, but provides muscle attachment sites and forms the lateral malleolus, or outer ankle. The tibia and fibula are connected by the interosseous membrane, a fibrous sheet that helps stabilize these bones and provides additional surface area for muscle attachment. And what about the foot bones? How are they structured? The bones of the foot are divided into three sections, the tarsal bones, metatarsal bones, and phalanges. There are seven tarsal bones in the ankle region, the largest being the calcaneus, or heel bone, and the talus, which articulates with the tibia and fibula to form the ankle joint. The metatarsal bones form the middle part of the foot. There are five of them, numbered from the medial, big toe, side. They connect the tarsal bones to the phalanges, which are the bones of the toes. Each toe has three phalanges, except the big toe, which has two. Additionally, the foot contains sesamoid bones, which are small, round bones embedded in tendons, particularly under the big toe, helping with weight-bearing functions. That's interesting. What ligaments are important for maintaining foot stability? Several ligaments are crucial for foot stability. One of the most important is the ligamentum plantar longum, which supports the arch of the foot. There's also the ligamentum bifurcatum, which stabilizes the connection between the calcaneus and the cuboid bone, forming a key structure called Chopar's joint. This joint is significant for movements like inversion and aversion of the foot. Moreover, the ankle joint, or articulatio talocoralis, is stabilized by the collateral ligaments, which include both medial and lateral ligaments. 
These ensure that the foot remains properly aligned with the leg during movements like walking or running. Lastly, what about the articulations between the toes and the metatarsals? The toes articulate with the metatarsals at the metatarsophalangeal joints. These joints allow for flexion, extension, and a bit of side-to-side -side movement. The ligaments here are crucial for maintaining stability, especially during walking. They include the plantar ligaments, which help stabilize the arch and prevent the toes from overextending. Between the toes themselves, you have interphalangeal joints, which allow for the bending and straightening movements of the toes. Stability here is ensured by smaller ligaments that connect the phalanges. Thank you for listening. If our podcast has been valuable to you, we would greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating and write a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, or subscribe, like, and share on our YouTube channel. Your support helps us greatly with discoverability. We hope to see you soon.